Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and we're getting back into the Spider-Man review series with the continuation of the Tom Holland films, Spider-Man Far From Home. After the events of Endgame, Peter Parker chooses to take a break and take a trip to Europe, but weird stuff starts to happen and he gets the help from Mysterio. But can he be trusted? Critics rate this film a 9 out of 10. All audiences rate this film a 9.5 out of 10. Budget of this film is $160 million. And this film box office back, by God, $1.132 billion. I am pretty sure out of all the Spider-Man films, this is probably the one film that box office the most. Now normally I would do trivia and goofs, but I didn't really have the time to do that for this review and the next one coming up in the next few days. So we're going to move on to my thoughts, the pros, the cons, and the comments. Comments wise, um, like I said in the, the uh, synopsis, this is set after the events of Endgame. This is also the first uh, series that acknowledges on screen that Aunt May knows that he is Spider-Man. I know that there is comic book versions that have that idea of her knowing and she actually starts helping him with like the tech and stuff. I think that's in the Ultimate Universe, I'm not 100% sure. But on screen this is the first time. I think this is the first film that teases the idea of multiverses. Um, I'm not sure if Captain Marvel did. I kind of skipped to that one. But that's besides the point. And, uh, spoiler alert for those who don't know, I still believe that even after all of the bullshit through all of the verification on screen, I still don't think Mysterio's dead. I think that we're not going to see Mysterio in a Spider-Man film for a very long time because I don't know how recent... How recent were those allegations for Jill and Hall? Not too recent. Like, maybe like late 2010s? Early 2010s? Ed Mike, the year that Jalen Hall was acute for, accused for sexual allegations. Um, I'm going to do the cons because there's only two cons of this film. <laughs> there's only two cons. Uh, number one, Flash. He is continuously a problem in the series. I don't like him in this one. I don't like him in Homecoming. End of story. And then there's the scene where after he gets the shit kicked out of him in the... Uh, illusion scene where Happy is supposed to be sewing his uh, wounds together with stitches and it was pointed out to me while watching this film that he doesn't have a needle and thread in his hand. It's really not really anything bad. It's just I always put nitpicks in the cons too. So nitpicks, like I said before, are nothing that really hurts the ra my rating for the film. It's just something to put in the cons. It's not like me deliberately saying I don't like Flash in this film. That's a different story. But it's... It could have just edited in a, a string or just had him play with a string of a different color of the background. Pros! A new villain on the on the Spider-Man cinema screen. Mysterio. This is the first time that they've shown Mysterio on screen. The idea of Mysterio in a movie itself is actually kind of cool because you can easily fuck it up if you have a really bad, like, special effects and CGI crew. But if you have a really good one, like this film did, you can have a lot of fun with a character like Mysterio. Which, they nailed this one on the head. Just like my next pro here, talking about Tom Holland's continuous great acting as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. It is a huge step up from the first film. The first film was great. Like, his performance in that first one was fantastic. Just the fact that he had two more sequels, it improves over time a lot more, and this shows a lot more that he was able to embrace the character even more than he was in the last film. The high-tech suit he has in the beginning of the film, it is shown in uh, Infinity War and Endgame, but just for the Spider-Man series, just seeing it in the review series that I'm doing right now, it's actually kind of cool, where, like, it kind of, like, Digitalizes in and, in and out with the mask and everything. I like I like the uh, Iron Spider suit. I think that's what it's called in the mythos of the MCU. But high tech suit, awesome. He has his dad's briefcase when he goes to London. I actually missed this little uh, Easter egg when I saw it in theaters, and when I saw it again the other day, 
I was like, hey, look, those are his dad's initials. I like the fact that he had a suitcase, just like how he had his suitcase in the Amazing Spider-Man series. The way they portrayed the awkward teen moments in this film were improved as well. I feel like they were actually trying to like blend in with how the kids are nowadays. What Garfield tried to do in his Amazing Spider-Man films but kind of went over the top and kind of just stuck with the ed the what do what do they call them these days edgy kids uh, I guess but portrayed very well on the t awkward teen moments like I said earlier when I was talking about Mysterio uh, the special effects and the CGI was phenomenal in this film again if you're gonna have Mysterio in a film like this you need to have fantastic special effects and CGI for the master illusionist that I totally butchered that word. Master Illusionist Disease this. Audience, do you want to pronounce that word for me? Illusionist? Hopefully Master the mic. Illusionist. Hopefully the mic picked that up. You need a good CGI and special effects group. And they had that. When he's in Europe, his creative ways to keep his identity, like with the masquerade mask when he's fighting with the water monster, or the pretty much the all blacked out spy suit that he has or the night monkey suit that he has the writing of this film is oh man like if you have watched all the other MCU films that tied in with this the writing is so great when it comes to this movie because it is directly following after the events of Endgame it was a great continuation it was a great just story altogether everything felt like it fit perfectly MJ finding out that he is Spider-Man as much as I love the heroic part, or the, or the heroic scene in Spider-Man 2, MJ finding out in this film was actually a bit more entertaining, because, I mean, it works for them as being kids and whatnot. Moving on to my favorite scene in the entire movie, it would probably, I, I call it the illusion scene, but where they're transitioning through, like, different illusions that Mysterio's creating, trying to distract Spider-Man and get the information that he needs. That scene tied in with my next one with the zombie Avengers with, with Undead Iron Man. All of that put together, along with tying that in with the writing and how it's portrayed with the special effects, it was fantastic. I adore this film for the writing and the CGI and the special effects. I can go on and on about this, as I already have been, but the illusion scene is by far my favorite scene in this entire film, and I could watch that entire scene on loop if I wanted to. The part where... Um, Peter is rebuilding his suit in the jet with all the tech, kind of similar to what Iron Man had. It was kind of a callback to when, I guess, Iron Man was building his first suit with the tech he had at the Stark Towers with the ACDC playing in the background, or I should say, Led Zeppelin, quote-unquote. But I really enjoyed that little callback. It was kind of like a, uh, a heartwarming moment for a lot of viewers. I didn't write it down, but... The final fight scene was very creative and very great, and I didn't feel like it dragged out too long. I thought it was perfectly timed and well paced, and again, it worked out. I feel like just with the chemistry of Jake Gyllenhaal and Tom Holland, it helped out a lot because I saw some of the uh, like deleted scenes and the bloopers or whatever, and it really did look like Holland and Gyllenhaal like meshed well, like very well together. And my last pro is the uh, post credit scene with the surprise cameo of J.K. Simmons returning as J. Jonah Jameson. That was probably the one moment in theaters where I literally almost stood up and screamed at the the, 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 the giant theatrical screen in happiness because J.K. Simmons is perfect as J. J. Jonah Jameson. I loved it. If you agree that Mysterio is still alive, let me know in the comments. Also, if you if you have enjoyed this review so far, and enjoy any other content that I've posted out in the past or what you're about to see in the future, uh, like, share, subscribe, join the madness, join our Discord, a link down below. Definitely Discord, because I'd like to talk to you guys so I can hear some more ideas. Moving on to my rating. I like this film a lot. I really, really do. I do have to say that as much as I do love this film, a part of me may slightly like Homecoming a little bit more. Not that I'm saying that, that there's anything really missing from this film. This film is perfect as it is. It's just something about Homecoming makes it, like, special in its own way. 
and I kind of joked about it and said that it that it has that Michael Keaton touch to the film because like he's re a really great actor and like I'd love to see him and more in the Spider-Man universe but as this film stands it does get a higher rating than Homecoming because of the fact that it has less cons than that first film does and this film gets a 9 out of 10 one point more than Homecoming. Now the next time you shall see me will be the review for the second Tom Hardy Venom film, Venom Let There Be Carnage, and then we will have one more review of the Spider-Man series, Spider-Man No Way Home, that's kind of our end game for all these uh, Spider-Man videos, and we'll wrap it all up with the usual thing we do, we rank all the films in the series. This is Mike Check 95 I hope you enjoyed the review.